what got you into go-karting? Well, I started go-karting at the local tracks with my buddies. We're all super into F1 racing. And we eventually, it eventually just wasn't enough for us. And we wanted a, to go a little faster, obviously. So we joined um, the Arrive and Drive program at Goodwood. Very cool. But like, what made you think of, oh, go-karting, that's something that I'm interested in. Because I didn't even know that it was a sport other than the go-karting that you do at like, you know, a theme park. Yeah. Um, it would, like, just being super into F1 and seeing and knowing that, knowing that go-karting is how they got into it. So just knowing the sport, I knew that go-karting is where it all started. And... Mm -hmm that's really how I got into it. I know for other people that wouldn't be into F1, it'd be different. Yeah. Because I already knew through watching videos of Formula One videos and all that, like, oh, these guys started with these go-karting teams and so on and so forth. Very cool. Because we didn't know that until we interviewed people. Um, what's the most common misconception about the sport, if there is any? Well, there is a lot of people think it's when I tell them I go kart race, they think, oh, like anyone can go do that at a public track, right? But it's much different with what I'm doing. It's open wheel, so there's no bumpers around the wheels, so it can be a little more dangerous. And the carts probably go 10 times faster than your local public track. Very cool. Uh, so how does uh, someone uh, get into go-karting uh, as you have? The best way to do it is to join the Arrive and Drive program at your local track, like Goodwood Cartways or Innisfil Indy. And they do this program where you go with no equipment and they provide everything. They provide a cart. They provide a helmet if you need it. They provide a suit if you need it. You can bring your own if you have it. And it's basically organized racing. There's points, there's flags. You learn everything there is to do with racing. That's uh, super cool. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, what are, uh, but, uh, so what are the possible dangers, though, of doing this? Um, there is some dangers. Like, like I said, there's open wheel, it's open wheel go-karting. So if you touch wheel to wheel, it's very common for the cart to flip over. So, and there's no roll bar, no seatbelts in go-karts because you just can't wear a seatbelt because there's no roll bar in them and they don't have a roll bar to make them lighter and everything. But yeah, that's definitely the most dangerous thing. And just crashing in them in general can be, uh, can be quite harsh. I can only imagine. Um, what are the differences in risk between karting on a track and like driving an actual car on public roads? Like you mentioned a few, but if you compare them, what are the differences? What are the differences between driving a go-kart on the track and driving a car like, like a race car on the street? Yeah, and like in terms of what's more dangerous in your opinion? Well, driving a car like a race car on the street would definitely be more dangerous. It's not a controlled race track. So, like anyone would know, anyone could pop out anywhere on a race track. There's only the drivers that are racing on the track. It's organized with like yellow flags and everything. So if someone crashes, there's yellow flags getting waved on the on the track. So everyone knows to slow down and you're not able to pass uh, during a yellow flag. Cool. Um, sorry. What is your personal take on street racing? This is the illegal kind. Yes, um, definitely dangerous and not something you want to be doing. If you want to be racing, you should be investing in going to the track and doing it the right way. I agree with you. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm kind of curious, what, uh, what's the price difference between uh, getting your own go-kart and uh, like building it up 
versus like getting a, a streetcar and customizing. Well, it's huge. A streetcar is a lot more money and a lot more work for a go-kart. For example, in my case, I bought my first go-kart for $3,000 and there's no customizing needed to these go-karts because in go-kart racing, they're everyone's equal. So for instance, like my engine is a Rotax engine. So I'd be racing in a Rotax class where everyone has to have the same engine. So they stay stock, which is very more than fast enough or please anyone and sorry I lost my train of thought where I'm going with this you're asking okay yeah uh how much uh so yeah I bought the first go-kart for three thousand dollars and then to go out and just go lapping it's about depending on the track it can be from 50 to 100 dollars for a full day of driving on a racetrack so I know in a car to go lapping you usually like however much for like so many hours or something but okay. with a go-kart you can give them the 50 to 100 bucks and you have the whole day there of racing and then normally to enter a real race in a go-kart it's about 100 to 150 dollars to enter a race day which would give you like a bunch of practice sessions a qualifying and then one to three races okay cool I, that's, Sorry, that, that's I just have an actual question out of interest like where do you buy a go-kart like it's not like you can get one at costco or go into the store and just yeah buy yeah, yeah so all these go-karts they're not go-karts that i'm building or anyone's building i'm buying the go-kart complete and for me i know what i'm looking for so i've found mine online on kijiji and uh use selling sites like that but all the tracks always have uh, go-karts for sale, brand new or used. They usually sell them for a little bit more than what you can find online, but you're taking a risk buying online because anyone could sell junk, right? You have to know what you're looking for. Absolutely. Yeah, Sorry, to that. no, that's okay. Um, that's it. Yeah, that's interesting. You guys don't like uh, customize that or anything like that. I always. I always thought in racing you would like want to like adjust the suspension or something. Well, yeah, or... definitely uh, some like suspension and tires and stuff like that. But when it comes to the engine is what I thought you were talking about. Oh, the engines can't be uh, can't be modified when it comes to racing. If you're just out there lapping and having a good time or if you and a few buddies have them, there's definitely things you can do to uh, customize your engine to make it go faster. And it would be like way way cheaper than mm. doing it to a car because it's such a small engine right right yeah yeah i got you um so like competing as a go-kart racer uh, how far do you get to travel well in my case i do it for fun so i just joined a small uh club uh at innisville indy a uh, car track in innisville and i only race there but for other people that get right into it they're traveling all over the world now Trump Blanc in the winter they do the Florida winter tour um I know I've raced in Poland Italy all over the world if you're getting right into it you can be traveling everywhere to do it That's I'm great. 20 uh 24 now so it's just a little hobby for me I wish uh, my parents got me into it when I was a little guy <laughs> Um, so I don't know if you know the answer to this, but like, what is the top speed of a professional go-kart? Like when they're doing their races and what has your top speed been? So the cart that I have is a pretty common engine and it goes from, it can top out at about hundred to 120 kilometers an hour, depending on the straight. So yeah. most tracks, uh, the straightaway will allow you to get up to 100, but some with longer straightaways, you can get up to 120. And then there's the go-kart, which is like a level up for mine. That has a six-speed transmission a shifter cart, and those can get up just shy of 200 kilometers an hour. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. And so have you gone that fast in yours? Uh, I've gone 110 kilometers is the fastest I've gone in mine. Very cool. That's pretty fast. Yeah, uh, especially being an inch off the ground, it's uh, quite the thrill. 
and you're pulling like you're pulling G's through the corner because you're hitting the corners at like 60 to 80 kilometers an hour and your body is just getting thrown around like crazy. I can imagine. So um, many young people may not be interested in learning about the dangers of street racing. So how do you think we can encourage alternative options for them to choose without breaking the law and doing something really unsafe? So like to get them to kind of do what you're doing. Because we have heard that people don't really want to spend the money in going to a track or travel the distance in going. So yeah. what is your opinion on that? Well, my opinion would really be joining this Arrive and Drive program that me and all my friends did, which got us more into the go-karting scene and buying our own go-karts and stuff. But other than that, I it's really just showing them how to get into it and because a lot of people don't know about it right like when I first found out about it I had no idea it was a thing and then I found out that I didn't have to have any equipment and I can show up and race these double carts that go 80 kilometers an hour so and the arrive and drive program you don't get to drive a go-kart like I have but it's still a racing go-kart it's open wheel and yeah, it still goes up to 80 kilometers an hour. So it's still more than enough for anyone to uh, to get their rush. That's cool. I'm definitely tempted to try it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, so another complaint uh, a lot of street racers have that we've, that we've discovered is uh, that a lot of them com complain or they feel that uh, tracks are just too expensive, uh, just to rent for the day or whatever. And we're wondering now is like, is that something you agree with? Uh, and if so, like, how can we change that? I guess it's kind yeah, of the same. It, but do you think that it's like expensive? Is that really an excuse, or is that like they just don't want to take it to the track? I mean, it definitely is really expensive. So in my case, I used to have a sports car, and my dream was always to bring it to the racetrack and modify it and all that. But I simply couldn't afford it. So that's sort of where I started looking for other options to drive on a racetrack. And when I came across go-karting, which is definitely much cheaper, still not cheap, but cheaper than taking a car to a track. It that's definitely a, is uh, quite expensive to bring a car to a racetrack. So oh, I, can, I can see uh, where people would say that, but... I guess it's really no excuse to be doing it on the street, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Um, so, like, uh, so, uh, 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 another question I was curious about is, uh, um, do you plan on uh, go going anywhere in go karting? Like, do you plan on get, like going into like big leagues in the future or anything like that? No, not me. Only because I started doing it so late. It was maybe three or four years ago I started doing it, so I was already in my twenties. And it's sort of just a hobby for me now. But definitely for these youngsters I see at the track that are getting brought there by my parent, by their parents, even at the arrive and drive, um, I'm sure their all their goal is to uh, to get higher up in the the racing scene. Mm -hmm. And then I think the real end goal for anyone that really loves it is uh, Formula One or Indy driving, something like that. Absolutely. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Okay, no problem, guys. Later. Have a good night. You too. Bye. Bye. Bye.